Hi, Runner Rob here. Today we're just going to do a brief overview of Chow Runners and who we are, why we exist. So of course, Chow Runners logo and then uh, we get the food to you. Nice little catchphrase. Let's get right into this. So Chow Runners is an online service company that connects service members, their families, and DOD employees living and working on military installations to the community around them. This is executed by coordinating drivers and local businesses, bridging the gap between on-base life and businesses outside the wire. We are owned and operated by veterans and military families, giving us the unique perspective and understanding of military life. Now, a quick background on me. Uh, I used to do duty days on base all the time, and the common phrase is, if you're hungry, order pizza. And for me, I was spending somewhere between 25 to 35 bucks a pop for pizza. And if you're the average I have duty, so I'm going to order pizza guy or gal, then you know that you get the pizza and then you eat what you can and the rest of it goes in the fridge. And usually a day or so later, someone's saying, hey, someone needs to toss this out. Or if you're lucky enough to have somebody around that you can share it with, there you go. But uh, a lot of places that deliver the pizza on base don't really offer single single serving portions. So the other thing factor with this is that it's really not the healthiest thing. And I wanted something for myself that was more suitable for a one person meal. But this is just the start of the problems here. When you talk about base, you also have to understand that there's people on base that have health conditions. Some where spouses or children have autoimmune diseases, and it could be something as simple as diabetes. But as a community, there isn't a variety of choices for those who live on base and can't go out to purchase food. And that really hurts because if you live off base, you have all these delivery opportunities. And during this pandemic, this has been a really big issue. And when you talk about these delivery places, even with California in general, the the delivery industry is, is really hurting in California right now. There's lots of uh, businesses that are spinning lawsuits right now just based on the fact that there's unfair commission practices, uh, unfair practices of businesses saying, no, we don't want you to deliver our food and the company is doing it anyways. So there was a lot of issues that we wanted to address all at the same time. And that's where we all came together and made Chow Runners. It's a delivery service to base, but it's fair for all parties, the drivers, the customers, the merchants. It's a way to earn extra cash for service members and spouses in their free time that offer flexible hours for both because a lot of military service members, they want to go and do something in their free time where they can earn some extra cash, but Sometimes because of the not so flexible work schedule, it, it becomes rough. Some days you're off early and then some days, you know, you, hey, we have to stay late tonight. And for a military service member, that's a lot of stress that something like this would be a good opportunity for them to, to really do something in their free time that earns a little extra money. So how has this actually gone so far for us? Well, in January, we applied for our licenses and the pandemic happened. So we got a little delayed for our, our launch that we uh, tried to get early, very early in the year. Uh, on March, we decided on our platform and we really took a lot of time to do this because this is something important. It's a security measure and we got top the line AWS servers to really host this off. And we wanted to make sure that what we were doing was safe, secure, with encrypted processes, and that's what we, uh, that's what a lot of our money as a company went to invest into. In May, we actually conducted our first deliveries to SOI in San Onofre, which was a, a big deal. We had some onesie twosies in South starting around that time. And in July, we actually tripled our driver amount, which is uh, a, a big success on our part. And up to that point, we were having days where we would actually have to say, hey, we we can't open today. We don't have any drivers available to drive. And uh, after that, we started having daily occurrences where we would be open at least, you know, once a day. And uh, I'll get to more on that in a second. But and then this 
now coming in October, we're going to have 60 drivers. Maybe not all of them are actively driving, but we, we have currently 60 drivers on the roster. So why are we not always online? Drivers are independent contractors, and the hours of operations are completely driven by the spouses and military members that go active as a driver. Because of our unique business model, we can't force them, nor will we want to, to come on at a certain time. The company itself only provides the digital marketplace to connect the drivers and the customers and the merchants. How a driver comes online? Well, first they let us know that they're actually going to be active. And then the platform itself puts it on social media that, hey, we have a driver available for this area or whatever area they're driving in. And then the driver accepts contracts as they're offered through the platform. Uh, sometimes, for whatever reason, they have to get offline. You know, because again, we're a very flexible platform with the drivers and unique in that sense. So, let's say we have five contracts and only two drivers online, and they both have to jump off because of family or hey, I've got work tomorrow and I need to get off here early. I'm not, I'm not feeling so hot. I need to get some rest in. Then uh, we go ahead and refund those those contracts back to the customer. Uh, one of the big priorities for us, safe driver, safe community. And what does that actually mean? Well, a lot of platforms have timers that will actually penalize the driver if they are over a certain time frame or scale. And a lot of these timers are kind of unfair in the first place because of uh, delays from the restaurant, whatnot. We, uh, we got rid of that completely. We're in communities that have children that play games in the streets. We have communities with people PTing. And the last thing we want is for drivers to be rushing through those communities in their cars. So all the timers are gone. Uh, safe driver, safe community. Uh, as well, what we did to put in place with this is we actually tell the drivers, hey, take your time, make sure the order goes through thoroughly. And if there's an issue, let us know, communicate to the customers. Uh, as far as the revenue model, driver collects no less than $7 for on-base delivery and no less than $8. And the reason we came up with that number is because for a lot of other platforms, if they're offering something like a subscription base and uh, maybe in a certain set of conditions that they have, they may, may possibly be cheaper. Not, not likely, but they may be cheaper than us. However... In order to get to that point, they were these same platforms are offering their drivers three dollars for a delivery, and we talked about it a lot. And we said that's just not really doable for us to see a driver get paid three dollars when they are using their own gas and spinning their own wheels and putting wear and tear on their vehicles. It's just, it's just not fair to us. So we made a base minimum there, and then as far as drivers going distances beyond that. It's 57 cents per mile uh, if they go above that fee, right? And 100% of the driver's fee and tips get kept by them. The platform itself gets 20% of the food cost. Sometimes that it seems like it would be a lot. But sometimes, let's say there's a $12 order, you know, the platform gets three, but then we also have to do the service cost for payment processing and everything else. So... We're, we're hurting a lot from it, but it, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, elevated prices on food costs, it'll never happen. The only time that it's happened is for a few restaurants that went ahead and uh, set prices above what they posted for COVID and didn't actually post their modified price. And a lot of the time we ended up taking a hit on those restaurants as a, as a service. But, I mean, we wanted to make sure, again, that we properly represented the company's prices fairly because that's been a big complaint in California. Restaurants that say, hey, these guys have elevated charges and that's what customers are going to expect coming in our restaurants. We don't want to put restaurants in a bad spot. We want to remain transparent as possible. If there's any questions about who we are as far as child runners, feel free to message us through Facebook. There's usually one or two eyes always looking at Messenger to kind of monitor what's going on. 
or email us at pr at charrunners.us. Email goes out to all of us, so one of us will be happy to answer and get back to you. Uh, thank you very much for watching this presentation, Chow Runners. And if there's any more questions again, feel free to contact us. We're always very open to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you very much for your time.